Congratulations and welcome back to Learn Nerdery Ideology, everyone. You guys have made it to the fourth and final case of the CT angiogram and vascular capstone course. Uh, this is case D, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to approach the case. And uh, if you need to, you can go back and overview those original lectures that you can find under the vascular capstone course. You can look at the general search pattern video, but if you've made it this far, you probably know what you're up to and you know what you're getting into. So let's just take a look at case D. So case D is a 41 year old man. He comes to the hospital after a trauma. He's had an MVC or a car accident. And uh, if you want to, you can go to the link here. You can find the case and uh, you can also find a couple of questions there on that uh, capstone course. The first question for us here today is where is the abnormality located? So there's not a lot of a clue there in that question, so we're just going to have to jump right into the imaging and take a look now. As I mentioned, we're just going to jump right in here. We're going to go to the vascular capstone page. We're going to go ahead and scroll down until we get to case D, which is the 41-year-old man after the MVC. And we're going to go ahead and open up these images. Now you're going to have axial images from a non, I mean from a contrast CTA in the upper left corner here. So we'll just double click that so we can see that a little bit larger there. And uh, while that loads, we're going to start uh, going through our search pattern here. Uh, so we're going to start here at the arch. Uh, you're going to see some relatively normal vessels at the arch. You see the origins of the gray vessels are a little bit obscured by the contrast bolus there, but that's okay. It's probably not where the abnormality is. And we're going to start then by following this right common carotid up. So just keep uh, watching as you follow it up. I'm going to go a little faster here, and uh, we're going to go up. The common carotid is looking okay. Get to the bifurcation there. We have the external carotid and the internal carotid. Kind of looks okay as it comes up. See a little bit of irregularity there maybe uh, of that, that vessel. Like it doesn't look, doesn't look quite normal, but it doesn't look grossly abnormal either. Uh, so that's probably a little bit of a traumatic abnormality there. We're gonna now come back to the bottom. We're gonna take a look at the left common carotid artery and we're going to take a look Here's our common carotid. We're going to follow it up, same as we did before. We're going to follow it up until we get to the bifurcation. It's looking not half bad. No bifurcation there, the external carotid, the internal carotid. And when we get to the left internal carotid artery, we're going to start to see more abnormalities. You see a little bit of a wobble in the vessel, kind of like we saw before. And then you see this little outpouching along the lateral margin there. You see a little linear filling defect in the middle. Maybe like part of the intima is lifted up. You see more of the same, like right here in the middle here. And uh, as you go up, you've got these kind of multifocal outpouchings of the vessel wall. And uh, the vessel is clearly abnormally shaped. And so what we've got here is uh, abnormal outpouching of that ICA uh, in the neck. So let's continue our search. We're going to go back down to the bottom here and just check out our vertebral arteries. So here we have a vertebral artery. We're going to come up. Here you see a fracture right there of the transverse process there. So you know uh, this trauma had high enough energy to uh, break some of the, uh, the bones here. You have another little fracture there, a little fracture there. And uh, we see that vessel that looks not terrible. And we see a little bit of narrowing there, maybe a little bit of irregularity, maybe a little outpouching there. And so we've got a lot of abnormalities here, some vascular abnormalities. So we feel like there's a pretty high energy trauma and a lot of vascular abnormalities here, little, uh, little outpouchings and irregularities of the vessels. And uh, it's gonna come up intracranially and be, and be okay. We're gonna now do the same thing to the left vertebral artery. It comes off the subclavian right there. Comes up, here we go. I'm gonna go a little faster here. There's that fracture of the transverse process there. So that's not, not good. Uh, so far the vessel looks all right. Uh-oh, got a little outpouching there. It looks a little irregular there. All of these vessels are looking abnormal, so this is not good. Uh, he's got traumatic injury of all of these vessels, and then it looks like the greatest traumatic injury is of that left uh, internal carotid artery, and probably the right uh, internal carotid artery is a little, bit, uh, a little bit not normal as well. So we're looking at a lot of abnormalities here, but the most significant being this uh, regular outpouching here with a little luminal flap there of the left internal carotid artery. So we come back to our question here and the question is where is the abnormality located? And so we've seen that there are multiple abnormalities here, like essentially all the vessels of the neck are abnormal. The internal carotid arteries have these multifocal outpouchings and little rounded outpouchings of vessels or little aneurysms 
Uh, the vertebral arteries are both like somewhat irregular and kind of lobulated looking. Uh, so there's some traumatic injury of those vessels as well. So this gives you some idea of how much a vessel can be disrupted by trauma. So let's go back and take a look at a few more images and see if we can get a better grasp of what's going on there. So we're back to Clearpex here. We're going to first take a look at this uh, volume rendered image in the top right here. Uh, this is uh, listed as the right carotid artery. And so we see here's our bifurcation. Here's the external carotid artery. Here's the internal carotid artery. And if we come up and see the distal internal carotid artery in the neck, we can kind of uh, see that. We can rotate around that a little bit. That is not normal there, folks. Uh, you see a little outpouching there, an area where it's narrow, maybe another little outpouching there. So that wall has been uh, pretty, pretty badly disrupted. These little outpouchings are aneurysms. Now in the neck, when you have disruption of the vessel wall and little outpouchings here, they're most commonly pseudoaneurysms, meaning that they don't contain all the vessel walls. So you have a disruption of the intima or one or more layers and a little bit of a contained rupture there that's either contained by the media or the surrounding uh, muscular tissues. And so those are little pseudoaneurysms there uh, of that internal carotid there on the right. Uh, here we have uh, in the bottom left, we have some coronal images. So uh, these are some NPR images through the neck. And you can just get an idea for the abnormalities of these vessels. Here you see this right vertebral artery as it comes up in the transverse foramen there. You see it's narrowed and you have a little bit of an outpouching there. So it actually is more narrow than, uh, than I originally thought. Here you can see a look at it uh, on the left. So this is your left vertebral artery. Again, a little bit of, little bit of narrowing there. And uh, what we'll see is uh, those are the areas that are, that are closest uh, to those regions of fracture. So we can, we can kind of window it out here a little bit. And uh, those fractures were of, uh, we can't see them that well uh, on, these, on these projections. Here you see a fracture of a transverse process here. And uh, so there are a couple of fractures there. And uh, so that's indicative of high energy uh, trauma that you're dealing with here. Now, if you, let's just come a little further. Let's take a look now at this internal carotid artery on the, this is our internal carotid artery on the left. So we see it, it coming up and going through the Petrus Canal. And we see this is very abnormal. So it has a very irregular looking lumen little outpouchings there, which are markedly abnormal. And uh, we're gonna see uh, much of the same thing on the right. It's a, it's a little bit harder to see, uh, because it's kind of going in an alternate direction. And so, but you can actually see there's little areas of narrowing there and little shelf in, in the vessel there. So all of these vessels are abnormal within the neck. So we're dealing with uh, pretty abnormal vasculature. The most marked is this left internal carotid with these kind of larger pseudoaneurysms here, but there's clearly pseudoaneurysms of, of both sides here. So our third question here is this abnormality of the internal carotid artery is considered a true or pseudoversion. So we talked about that a little bit. Uh, in the neck, like most commonly, these aneurysms have one or more of the vessel layers damaged, such as the intima. And uh, you have a little tear in that wall there. Blood will extend beyond the intima then. And that makes it a pseudoaneurysm because it's essentially a contained rupture. You don't have smooth dilation of those vessel walls. Aneurysms in the brain are most commonly true aneurysms and they contain all of the walls. So the vessel walls just smoothly expanded uh, gradually over time or it's a stretching of all of those layers. So in the neck, we have pseudoaneurysms. So in summary for this case, we have uh, seen that trauma can cause injury to the vessels of the head and neck. In this case, it must have been a pretty severe trauma because you have injury to almost all of those vessels. Uh, we've seen uh, that this has some fractures associated with it. So it's usually high energy or penetrating traumas. If you get a stab wound to the neck or gunshot injury to the neck, you can also have uh, vessel wall injuries. Uh, these are graded on a scale of one to five uh, using the Denver or Biffle scale. We won't cover that here, but it kind of goes uh, from little, uh, little narrowing uh, further, uh, further up to more narrowing and pseudoaneurysm or active extravasation. And you can look those up uh, if you want to learn more about those. Uh, the aneurysms in the neck are pseudoaneurysms and that part of the wall is disrupted, whereas aneurysms in the brain are usually true aneurysms or they're smooth stretching of all of the walls of the vessel. Congratulations. If you've made it to the end of this video, you've probably made it to the end of the vascular capstone course. We've learned a lot in this course. We've learned some of the common indications from vascular or for vascular imaging, ranging from new neurologic deficits or stroke, trauma, uh, suspected vascular abnormalities on a CT or MR. So we've seen kind of all those reasons you might do vascular imaging. We've learned about some of the different imaging techniques ranging from CT angiogram, 
MR angiogram, or ultrasound. And those are the most common things you're going to run into, uh, in addition to catheter angiography, which is kind of a final uh, technique which you may see. Uh, finally, you've gone through some of the hands-on course. You've seen some common pathologies, including aneurysm, fibromuscular dysplasia, and arterial venous malformation, or AVM. Or in this last case, you saw a traumatic uh, arterial injury after a car accident. And so if you want, like go back and take a look at those, uh, those images. You can scroll through those on your own time and learn a little bit more about uh, how you might uh, approach these uh, during your, or in your practice as you kind of get better at looking at vascular imaging. I just want to thank everyone for their attention during this course and for checking out these videos. Uh, if you like these videos, be sure to uh, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can check out more of our material on LearnNeuroRadiology.com. Go back and check out that full CTA course and some of the additional videos. Uh, we have a lot of videos there ranging from board review to just learning uh, more about some of the basics of radiology. So thank you guys all and uh, be sure to check out uh, the rest of the site. Thanks.